Can you name five artists? You probably thought of Leonardo da Vinci, Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dalí, Andy Warhol, or maybe others. Now, can you think of five women artists? Maybe this was a little harder. Some names might come to mind, like Frida Kahlo, a Mexican artist who has become worldwide recognized, or Yayoi Kusama, Japanese artist who is known as the queen of polka dots. But we sadly find that many known artists are men. And without holding any grudges against them, this podcast is focused on talking about topics regarding equality in the art world, with an open mind and in search of being empathetic to the many voices that rise today in search for equality, and bring your attention to a diverse selection of artists, those identified either as women or LGBTQ+, not only the renowned ones, but also the ones that are emergent, contemporary, or from minorities, BIPOC, and many, many more. Welcome to Inclusive Art Podcast. My name is Rebecca Navarro, and I invite you to join me in this road to equality in art. Let's start with the question, why are there less renowned women artists? In 1971, Linda Nocklin, an art historian from the United States, wrote the article, Why Have There Been No Great Women Artists? And before you think, of course they have. Remember that the article was written in the early 70s. And even though there already existed great women artists, the attention that was put in them was minuscule compared to today. Even when today is still tiny but it was way worse. For many years, societies around the world did not allow women to become artists for many reasons, like the roles they had to fulfill in their homes, in the kitchen, with their children, to other reasons such as not being allowed to study the human figure, among others. The art world became mostly a manly world. Obviously, there are exceptions, but the opportunities were scarce. Some of them were coming from privileged families, or they were related to other artists, such as Mary Cassatt and Artemisa Gentileschi. But in general, talented women were often forbidden to pursue an artist's career. This fact has changed through the years, but changes are still to be made. There are many reasons why an artist, any artist, can become renowned. For many centuries, art has been linked to many factors, such as patronage, exposure, price, and others. The Medici family come to mind, for example, when talking about patronage, as they supported many artists during the Renaissance. Exposure has to do with the exhibits an artist has had in museums, galleries, even social media, and how many people their art has reached. And price has to do with desirability, how the artwork is coveted and its monetary value determined. And speaking of money, did you know that between 2008 and 2019, more than $196.6 billion dollars were spent in auction? Yes, $196.6 billion. Dollars. It is a lot, isn't it? In the Artnet article, female artists represent just 2% of the market. Here's why and how that can change. Julia Halperin and Charlotte Burns wrote that from all that money, only $4 billion dollars were spent in art made by women. And that is 2%. 2% of all that money. Pablo Picasso's artwork alone generated $4.8 billion dollars during that same period of time. 
From those four billions, 40% belongs only to five women artists, $1.6 billion in total. Can you guess who these women are? This top five women artists is formed by In number five, Agnes Martin Number four, Georgia O'Keeffe Number three, Louis Bourgeois Number two, Joan Mitchell And number one, Jajoy Kusama Now Bear in mind, I am only mentioning the art sold in auction so far. If we start talking about galleries and art fairs, things are not better. In the great city of New York, one of the centers of the art world, a group of female artists, the Guerrilla Girls, along with the anonymous feminist art collective Pussy Galore, show the world what they called the gallery tally. In 1986, the first report card came out by the Guerrilla Girls, with a female representation close to zero, considering galleries such as Leo Castelli, Mary Boone, Pace Gallery, and others, representing one or two women, and in many cases, none. By 2014, the second report card was posted on Facebook by Pussy Galore, Even when the representation had increased, galleries like David Swerner had 24% of female representation, Pace Gallery 16%, and Gagosian 21%. This year, Harper and Worth showed on their webpage a female representation of 32 women out of 91 artists in total. Better, probably, but there is still a lot to do for gender equality. And I'm not even going to get started with art first. There was a representation of 4% from 2014 to 2019. And I am going to leave the links to different articles so you can see for yourself. Sadly, things have not changed much. 2020 was an exceptionally different year, as you can probably imagine. Online sales increased exponentially, and many women artists received more attention, certainly. But the top world artists continue to be white men. Equality in the arts is still far, and it is a very controversial and uncomfortable topic. The art world is elitist in many ways. Thankfully, some things have slowly been changing. In many places, women can now become artists, and many galleries are starting to broaden their representation. Many people are buying their art, following them in social media, while many feminist and minority art movements are empowering them. And here is where you and I enter this scenario. Yes, you. As mentioned previously, The art market is influenced by the interest of an audience in a particular artist and their work. The more an artist is known, the more exhibits sell have. The more attention, more exposure, more connections, more art. This is why I invite you to join me in the next episodes, where I will tell you about Yajoy Kusama and Georgia O'Keeffe but also about other contemporary artists, emerging artists, artists of color, of indigenous backgrounds, the rebel, the unique, the brave, so I can tell you about their lives, what inspired them, what challenges they faced, and you can feel connected and identified with them, and explore a wonderful world of opportunities, whatever your sexual identity, your ethnic origin, or the color of your skin. There is a place for you here. Join me and let's transform exclusive art into inclusive art.
In the next episode, I will tell you the story of the Japanese artist Yajoi Kusama. So if you like this episode, please subscribe to the podcast and share it. I would love to hear your comments and suggestions and to see which artists you would like me to talk about. As I mentioned before, I am leaving all the links and bibliography under the podcast description and the links to my social media. Inclusive Art is a bilingual podcast and the English episodes will be published every other Friday. Thank you for listening. Hasta pronto. Thank you.